Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Let's proceed with topic 4 We are a bit late lah Compared to other class Class lain dah Topic 5, 6 dah It's okay Topic 4 ni uh, Very simple Just concentrate You'll be fine Okay Topic 4 is about money banking and financial system So we are learning about bank now Okay uh, This topic should be very interesting Okay, so first of all, kita tengok dari segi definition of money. So, what is money? Ya, awak boleh kaunti kan? So, money ni adalah benda yang normal yang awak nampak hari-hari. Kemudian -hari. kaunti pun nampak juga kan? Okay, so, money is anything that can add as a medium of exchange. Okay, and besides that, the function of money is to measure value with money we can know the value of a certain product for example kenapa handphone mahal kenapa pencil case murah uh, kan walaupun handphone lagi kecil daripada pencil case because we value handphone more than pencil case so, uh, whichever goods yang to purchase that product, you need much more money. Itulah goods yang lebih valuable compared to another one. Okay? So, with money, it is possible to value a certain good. Okay? Uh, second, uh, medium of exchange ni, tahulah kan? Digunakan untuk pertukaran barang kan? Okay? If you want something... You can get the product as long as you have money. Before this, without money, it is very hard for us to get something we want. For example, I have a cow. Lembu. Lepas tu, I would like to buy... Uh, I would like to uh, to get some uh, rice. Okay? So, the thing is, I, uh, I just want... A pot of rice. Saya tak nak banyak. Bukan nak seguni ke. Saya cuba nak satu... Satu... Orang kata satu pot sahaja. So, how do I exchange that with my cow? It's impossible. Takkanlah saya nak bagi kaki lembu je untuk tukar untuk sejumpak kan? Ha, macam itulah. And so, when we have money... Everything becomes possible. Okay. Next is store of value. Money ni, dia boleh uh, apa? simpan nilai. For example, uh, you have 10 ringgit. Okay. You simpan sekarang bawah bantal. Lepas tu, another 20 years, you baru perasan, you baru teringat dan keluarkan dia balik. Still, that thing is called body. Dan dia ada nilai. Okay? It's just a piece of paper tapi because of the printed or the piece of paper, that's make it valuable. Okay? That is standard of deferred payment. Standard of deferred payment ni something yang you ask for it first and then you pay later. For example, macam saya uh, nak tempah baju raya. Bila kita tak berapa nak raya lah tahun ni kan. Um, so, I ask my tailor hantar kain dulu dia jahit dahulu. Saya tak bayar dulu. Dia jahit dahulu. And then I pay later. So this is possible because the tailor do I have money to pay for it later. Cuba kalau pengembis datang hantar baju suruh jahit ke. Ha, tailor ni akan rasa Okay, saya nak ambil ke tak ni. Dia boleh bayar ke tak. Ha, so itulah. So with money, it make it possible. So if you cannot understand the way I explain, this thing, the function of money, is in your textbook. 
page. Wait, ah, eh? I'll find it. Find. Okay, page three sixty. So if you don't have your textbook, you can ask in the group WhatsApp. I'll snap it for you. Okay, so here in the textbook, it said measure of value and a unit of account. Uh, store of value or wealth. And then we have a medium of exchange standard of different payment okay that's it all right so next we go for the qualities of money so the explanation for qualities of money you have this uh in page 359 so the other name for qualities of money are a characteristic of money Okay, all together we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, characteristic or qualities of money. We have acceptability, durability, divisibility, stability, portability, portability or transportability. Okay, get okay, the scarcity, get okay, the uniform, uniformity. or homogeneity. Okay, so characteristic the qualities of money in terms of acceptability. Ni maksudnya, everybody accept money as something valuable. So kalau ada orang kata, Alam, money ni tak ada nilai lah. I don't acknowledge money. If you have money, money is nothing. Uh, something wrong with that person. So, ada something wrong lah dengan dia tu. Everybody accept money is, uh, as, sub, uh, as a medium of exchange, something of value. Second one is durability. In terms of durability ni maksudnya, money ni dia tahan lama. Like I told you, you simpan duit bawah bantal 20 tahun akan datang you keluarkan still duit tu bernilai even though duit tu dah bertukar kepada duit baru you tukar kat bank negara nilai duit tu tak akan hilang you still boleh pakai duit tu it still bernilai RM20 ok divisibility ni means that uh, dia boleh dipecahkan nilai kepada nilai yang kecil for example you have RM100 you boleh tukarkan kepada wang lebih kecil so this is the best features of money instead of butter trade sebelum ni for example saya ada lembu kan a cow saya nak beli barang macam mana saya nak ambil kaki saja sedangkan itu benda hidup kan uh, so it's impossible with money it become possible in terms of stability uh, ini sama juga macam durability lah lebih kepada the value is stable ok uh, tapi uh, it's about a debate jugalah because uh, uh, can kita learn about inflation 50 ringgit before is not the same like 50 ringgit nowadays due to inflation orang kata kalau dulu you bawa 50 ringgit you pergi shopping you boleh dapat satu trolley tapi these days 50 ringgit satu bakul pun belum tentu uh, so uh, itu dari segi dia punya orang kata value jugalah tapi still dia 50 ringgit cuma dia nowadays with 50 ringgit you cannot buy much ok tapi stability tu maksudnya uh, people still acknowledge the value is still 50 ringgit uh, ok scarcity scarcity means you learn this in equal 162 limited Money should be limited. Dia tak boleh jadi 
uh, orang kata terlampau banyak macam daun macam rumput kat mana-mana dia boleh jumpa so if money has this characteristic dia tak akan ada nilai lah macam daun tu kenapa dia tak bernilai sebab dia too much terlampau banyak ada mengata tempat kalau daun di dalam Malaysia ada satu je pokok uh, dia akan sangat bernilai tapi sebab terlampau banyak pokok dia tak bernilai so money pun macam tu juga sebab tu Uh, the government, the bank negara cannot print out money sesuka hati because if money is too much money won't have value okay that is portability meaning that you can bring it anywhere, everywhere so this is the best feature also before this, without money you use butter trade if you have a cow You nak kahwin dekat Singapore, for example. Hantaran dia lembu. Ha, angkutlah daripada Terengganu ke Singapore. So, sangat menyusahkan, isn't it? Nowadays, we have money. You don't need to bring that in cash. You can convert into check. Or, you boleh transfer online sahaja. So, it's easier for us this days. Next is uniformity, uni, uniformity ataupun homogeneity yang ni lebih kepada uh, orang kata apa in terms of berat dia punya design tu ok uh, daripada dulu sampai sekarang duit kertas tu Berat dia Rupa dia RM10 tu Dia cuma Tukar printing sahaja uh, uh, Lagi satu Dia lebih Orang kata Precise For example Kalau kalau kita pakai Butter tray You nak tukar lembu Dengan tanah For example kan Lembu ni Tak ada dua ekor yang sama Sebiji In terms of size pun, walaupun dia kata, sama ni, berat dia sama. Tapi, kemungkinan besar dia ada beza lembu tu. Uh, so, tu yang menyebabkan orang boleh persoalkan. Tak nak, dia tak nak lembu A, dia nak lembu B juga. Bagi dia lembu B lagi lagi, lagi elok. Uh, so, itu akan menyebabkan banyak isu lah. Tapi, kalau dengan mandi dia, orang tak boleh kata, saya tak nak duit RM10 yang ni, saya nak duit RM10 yang tu. Sebab RM10 semua sama. Uh, so, tak ada orang akan timbulkan isu lah ok that is kita tengok in terms of types of money ini jenis money yang ni kita ada page 358 ok we have commodity money so commodity money ni lebih kepada money dalam bentuk barangan so ini dululah macam uh, before we have uh, apa paper and coin okay when we use butter tree commodity money yang dulu-dulu lebih kepada the use of something yang orang assume valuable for example livestock uh, uh, lembu kambing uh, untuk pertukaran sebab, uh, kepada barangan yang dia nak purchase Okay, uh, tapi this days commodity money ada lagi. Contoh dia, for example, uh, gold, silver, diamond, uh, okay, copper ke, okay. And then kita ada fiat money. So fiat money ni uh, adalah duit yang kita ada sekarang lah, yang everybody possess, which is coin and paper, duit kertas dan juga duit shilling. Okay, and then we have legal tender. So legal tender ni lebih kepada uh, a piece of paper representing money. Uh, for example, you simpan, uh, you, da, you beli sijil simpanan premium PSN. So it's basically a piece of paper, but that piece of paper representing money to legal tender. Okay. Uh, token money pula lebih kepada uh, 
You go for to farm fair. Okay. You tukar kepada chip dia tu. Nak masukkan mesin dia. Nak main game kat situ. Okay. So, itulah yang kita panggil sebagai token money. Lagi satu kalau you tengok TV kan. Yang kat casino tu. Uh, chip tu. Itu adalah token money. So, demand deposit adalah check. Okay. And dalam buku teks. Page 358 tu ada banyak lagi. Kita ada metallic money. Okay. Metallic money ni. Uh, dia lebih kepada iron, tin, copper, silver and gold. Uh, dia, dia asingkan pula. Bawah commodity money tu dia asingkan pula. Lepas tu. Untuk bawah fiat money tu dia asingkan. Paper dengan token money dia asingkan. And then kita ada bank money, kita ada plastic and dear money. So you can do your reading. Okay. Things you can read on your own, I tak ajar detail. Alright. That is kita tengok money supply. Right. Every country has its own money supply which is used in transaction. Okay. So sekali, daripada mana money tu datang? Okay. Ingat eh. Every country... Only one entity yang ada authority to print out money. Even though in the country ada banyak bank, okay? Only one authority, uh, only one entity ada authority, which is bank negara negara tersebut. For example, in Malaysia, bank negara Malaysia lah yang have the authority to print out money. Okay? So money supply ni siapa yang supply money? Is bank negara Malaysia for Malaysia lah. Okay, so there are three category, which is M1, M2, M3. Okay, so kita tengok kategori satu-satu eh. Alright, M1. M1 is money yang kita boleh directly use in transaction. Ataupun nama lain dia, most liquid money. So, ia adalah money yang awak pergi kedai boleh pakai terus. Uh, so, apakah yang ada dalam M1? It consists of currency. So, currency ataupun fiat money is the same thing. It is coin and paper money. It should buy BNM. Tak tu maksud dia palsu eh. Maksud dia that one is illegal money. Kita kira. Okay. So, yang kedua yang you boleh terus pakai di kedai adalah demand deposit which is check. Uh, tapi orang tengok lah tempat kan takkan you pakai check kat kedai runcit. Uh, so, pakai check kat tempat yang memerlukan pakai check lah. Okay. Check in account balance checkable deposit cap in commercial bank. Okay. Next is current deposit. Uh, current deposit. Kan you ada duit dalam bank kan? Boleh pakai current deposit. ATM. Pakai card. <coughs> okay. And next is traveler's check. So traveler's check ni adalah check yang universal yang di accept di semua negara. Tak kisah yang you pergi negara mana you bawa check tu, you boleh pakai. Okay. Sebab kadang-kadang tu kalau you bawa check bank yang tidak dikenali di negara yang... For example, you bawa check BSN ke Australia, for example. Uh, Australia tak tahu BSN tu wujud di Malaysia ke. Dia tak dia takut tipu kan. Ada isu penipuan kat situ. So, dia akan menyusahkan proses. Dia akan melambatkan proses jual beli. So, the best is if you want to use check while travelling, you convert kepada traveller's check. Kalau you tukar kepada traveler's check, tak akan ada isu. Everybody acknowledge this check is, orang kata apa, legal lah. Alright, so this is what we have in M1. Semua duit yang boleh guna direct terus dalam dalam transaction. And then kita ada M2. Okay, dalam M2, if you want to calculate M2, you must include the value of M1. So, ingat, sebelum kita boleh cari M2, kena, masuk, kena cari M1 dulu. So, dia tak boleh skip step. So, kalau dia suruh kira money supply, dia suruh kira M2, 
you must calculate M1 first. So what is the definition for M2? It is near money. M1, uh, near money plus M1, also known as almost liquid money. Maksudnya, dia liquid tapi taklah boleh guna terus. Dia kena tukar dulu. Okay. So, apakah dia? Dia, lah, dia adalah fixed and saving deposit in commercial bank. So, ini macam for example, you bawa buku bank pergi kedai. Uh, okay. You go to the shop, you want to buy something, but when you want to do the payment, you keluarkan buku bank you. Of course, pekedai akan acknowledge, ya, yeah, saya tahu cik ada duit, tapi cik tak boleh bayar ke buku bank. Kena withdraw dulu duit tu, baru boleh bayar. Ha, macam itulah. So, you must change the money first. Exchange the money. Withdraw the money first. Baru you boleh pakai. Next is negotiable certificates of tender. Okay. So, dia tak akan tanya detail apa-apa satu-satu dia apa. Awak cuma perlu tahu <coughs> item dia je. Repurchase agreement. BNM certificate. Dan juga treasury bills. So, I would story each of them individually. You need to find it on your own because this one won't be asked uh, apa, about the definition. So, apa yang you perlu tahu, you kena hafal sahaja what is the item yang ada dalam M2. Tapi ni bagi tips kat sini. Any other instrument that is in commercial bank. So, apa-apa saja yang ada dalam commercial bank, itulah yang kita assume sebagai M2. Commercial bank ni apa? Commercial bank adalah bank yang profit oriented. So, contoh commercial bank, definitely bukan BNM. Uh, bank negara Malaysia bukan. Okay. Selain tu, Bank yang commercial, Bank Bank, Afin Bank, ha, itu adalah commercial bank. Okay? Kalau Bank Bank, for example, Islamic Bank, Islamic Bank bukan commercial bank. For example, Bank Islam, Bank Muamalat, Tabung Haji. So, this bank are not commercial bank. Kenapa dia bukan commercial bank? Sebab it's against the religion. Okay, Islamic Bank ni untuk commercialize something yang melibatkan kewangan. So, dia tak boleh jadi commercial bank untuk Islamic Bank. So, kalau dia tak bawah commercial bank, Islamic Bank ni, dia bawah kategori apa? Dia kita panggil other financial institution. Lagi bank yang tak duduk bawah commercial bank adalah BSN. Bank si pada nasional kenapa tak duduk bawah commercial bank? Sebab itu adalah development bank. It's for the people. It's not for the purpose of commercialize. Okay. Same goes with pub, uh, agro bank. Kalau uh, dulu bank pertanian. Pun bukan kategori commercial bank. Okay. So I'll list down this. Don't worry. Nanti saya akan tunjuk the types of bank. And then we go for M3. M3, before you can calculate the value of M3, you must find the value of M2 dulu. Rasa dia tak encam lah. Okay. So, dia dalam M3 ada M2 plus saving and fixed deposit in other financial institution. Nampak tak? It's the same as saving and fixed deposit. Tapi yang di dalam commercial bank. But this one in other financial institution. So tips dia, anything yang dia tulis bawah other financial institution will be in category of M3. Okay. And then kita ada kuasi money. It is almost liquid money. Kuasi money ni adalah M2. 
to okay almost liquid money cannot be used immediately for transaction but can be easily changed into cash kita boleh guna terus tapi kita boleh tukar kepada cash so there are two types of quasi money broad quasi money actually dia punya defin, uh, apa pronunciation adalah kuasai kuasai money okay and narrow kuasai money so formula dia M3 kalau broad okay kalau broad you kena tolak M3 tolak M1 tapi kalau narrow M2 minus M1 everything minus with M1 cuma ni kita tengok kalau broad M3 kalau narrow M2 ok sebab broad adalah M3 ok M2 adalah dia ataupun narrow alright so for demand for money kita akan go for the next video cuma dia I'll teach you how to calculate the M1, M2, M3 using the question ok so kita tengok soalan so this is the question alright so question 1 the following tables contain contain the information about the components of money supply of the country so this is the information dia bagi macam ni lah soalan dia ok paper money bank negara certificate negotiable certificate saving deposit in commercial bank fix and saving deposit in other financial institution ok guys first of all you need to identify each item ni belongs to category apa M1 ke M2 ke M3 ha, ok mula-mula paper body paper body duit kertas boleh guna teruskan untuk transaction kan so dia bawa kategori M1 so you label kan? tulis kat situ M1 dekat sebelah tepi Bank negara sertifikat Ini sertifikat sijil Dia bawa kedai Bawa ke kedai sijil Boleh guna terus ke sijil tu untuk bayar beli barang Cannot right ha, So BNM sertifikat duduk bawah kategori apa tadi? Duduk bawah kategori M2 ha, So here kita labelkan sebagai M2 Negotiable sertifikat So bila dia tak bagi tahu duduk dalam kategori other financial institution ke duduk bawah kategori commercial bank ke kita assume dia adalah bawah commercial bank so negotiable certificate so here kita ada negotiable certificate uh, also under category M2 ok that is fixed and saving deposit in commercial bank uh, fixed and saving tapi keyword saya kat sini commercial bank so commercial bank is M2, fix and saving commercial bank is M2 and then fix and saving deposit in other financial institution so this one will be M3 see that? Uh, fix and saving in other financial institution M3 current deposit in commercial bank ok, careful student dia tengok commercial bank ya? dia berkata kalau commercial bank M2, careful here is the keywords it's current deposit. I've told you, right? Current deposit meaning that the amount of money we have in our account that we can use in instant. For example, you use debit card. So, current deposit is basically M1. Even though it is in commercial bank. Ah, so, current deposit here is M1. Alright? That is fiat money. Before this, we already defined fiat money, right? Fiat money is paper plus coin. Duit kertas campur duit shili. So, dia duit yang dia boleh diguna terus. So, fiat money is M1. Okay, so you have already labeled everything. Now, you can do your, your calculation. So, I have the answer there. Okay. Where is it? Okay. 
Let's see if we check to four. Okay. Right. So question one. So kita kecilkan sedikit. Alright. So first question, calculate the value for M1, M2, M3. So how to do that? You must calculate according to the sequence. Sebab dalam M2 ada M1. So kena cari M1 dulu. Supaya you boleh cari M2. Okay. Ini yang selalu studio buat, uh, buat silap. Sebab dia tulis kat sini, paper body is M1, right? Okay. Lepas tu, fiat body also M1. Lepas tu, satu lagi yang bawah kategori M1 adalah current deposit. So, dia tambah belakang paper, tambah current deposit, tambah fiat body. Salah. Kenapa? Because you forgot here. Fiat body ni bermaksud paper plus coin. Maksudnya paper is already in here. Uh, paper money dah ada lebih So ini adalah perangkap sahaja So kalau you masukkan lagi sekali paper money Maksudnya you kira dua kali paper money Salahlah calculation So what should you do is You should just put the value of fiat money Plus current deposit in commercial bank So you got your value of M1 And then you proceed to calculate M2 Termasuklah nilai M1 ni So 10650 ni Tambah terus, tambah. Sebab tu saya letak di bawah satu flow. Okay. Plus, the item for M2, BNM certificate, negotiable certificate, fixed and saving deposit in commercial bank. So, you list down the item here. Ha, list down macam dalam soalan. Sebab semua ni markah setengah, setengah, setengah. Okay. And then, this one plus this one plus this one plus this one, you dapat nilai ni. Okay. And then, last kali, Item yang ketiga untuk dapatkan M3 adalah fixed and saving deposit in financial, other financial institution. Dan nilai M2 kat sini kena plus 3,900. Then last kali, your value for M3 is 28,195. So you got three marks there. Simple. But be careful. Especially when there's fiat money. Because in fiat money, they already paper and coin there. Okay? Next is, dia kata, define near money. Uh, near money tadi, M2, right? Near money, define. So, I already told you, near money is basically the quasi money. So, this is the definition. Almost liquid money cannot be used immediately for transaction but can be easily changed into cash. Okay? Alright. And then, calculate its value. So, new money here, ada dua. Broad quasi money, narrow quasi money. So, how should I get? Oh, kita dah calculate lah. Beda M, M2 tadi kan? Ah, tak ada. Yadi. Dia tak yadi lah tu. Dia memang selalu buat macam tu. Tricky. Okay. So, bila dia tak mention dalam soalan macam ni, which one yang dia nak? Broad money ke? Near money ke? Okay. You boleh pilih yang mana. Alright. So, dalam case ni, in my calculation, I kira dua-dua. Broad kuasi money, M3 minus M1. Ambil nilai M3 kat sini. Tolak M1 here. Then, rukuasi mani, ambil nilai M2, tolak M1 here. I got the value there. Tapi kalau dia tak dalam exam sebenarnya, you don't need to do both. You just choose one. You can get your box. Okay. Differentiate between the commercial bank and the central bank. This one, I would teach you because you can read on your own. Okay. So, please do your reading. And... Find out the differences between commercial bank and central bank. So, the function of central bank is in page 375. While the function of commercial bank is in page 379. 
375 dan 379 uh, So basis sebenarnya Commercial Bank dengan Central Bank Central Bank is BNM Commercial Bank yang saya beritahu tadi lah A Profit Oriented Bank Okay This one I have a tissue So kita boleh skip dulu Monetary Tools ni saya kumpulkan sekali Untuk policy to solve problem of inflation dengan unemployment because there are kaitan so hopefully you can do this you need to try ok, for example macam question 2 dia tak akan direct macam kita belajar belakang dia akan beritahu currency in circulation so bila you kata currency in circulation meaning that they have both the money the paper and the coin lah tu so dia adalah M1 Demand deposit is check. Tadi kan. Uh, walaupun ditulis private sectors. See here. Demand deposit is under the category of M1. Uh, be careful. Dia tengok belakang je. Okay. Repurchase agreement place in commercial bank. Uh, ini baru you tengok. Repurchase agreement commercial bank. So it's M2. Saving a fixed deposit in commercial bank is M2. Saving a fixed deposit in other banking institution, M3. Negotiable instrument of deposit in commercial bank, M2. Negotiable instrument deposit in financial institution or merchant bank is M3. So after you have labeled, barulah you do your calculation. Label dahulu, baru do your calculation. Okay, so here, currency is circulation plus demand deposit. Dapat M1, proceed. This is how you answer this. Okay, and then they can define quasi money. Almost liquid money cannot be used immediately in transaction but can be easily changed into cash. Okay, so look at question 3. Okay, there. Calculate the amount of token money. So, token is coin. How to find coin? In this case, they give you fiat. You know fiat, fiat have both coin and paper, right? So, kat sini dia bagi paper. So, to find coin is basically fiat minus paper. Dapat coin ataupun token. Okay? So, in terms of the calculation... You put the value inside the table lah. Fiat money. Tak payahlah ambil paper sebab dalam fiat money already have paper. Okay, you need to try. Please try. So this one, KIV dahulu. Because this is credit creation. The third part in this topic baru saya ajar. Okay. And this one is also not that. So you may try question 6, 7. 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, that's it, okay, please try, alright.